Let's start with something that hooks every serious historian and survival-minded viewer right away. Soldiers in the 1940s routinely slept in concrete bunkers surrounded by frozen ground, with nothing but a small stove, a candle, or even their own body heat. And yet those bunkers held warmth far better than the average modern home does today. Meanwhile, you shut off the heat in a typical 2025 house for just 24 hours in 30-degree weather, and the temperature inside drops like a dead weight. That contrast isn't nostalgia or exaggeration. It's physics, engineering, material science, and a wartime understanding of passive heat retention that we no longer build for. And that's the problem modern people don't grasp. Waitu's engineers didn't try to heat a bunker. They tried to stop heat from escaping. What they created wasn't comfortable. It was survivable. And survivable architecture behaves in ways that our thin-walled, HVAC-dependent homes simply cannot copy without deliberate design changes. Once you understand why those bunkers held warmth so effectively, you'll understand not only a forgotten piece of wartime engineering, but a set of survival principles that can keep your home cabin, or shelter far more heat-stable than the average modern structure. That's what we're breaking down today. WWE bunkers stayed warm because they were built as thermal batteries, not houses. Bunkers weren't built with heat efficiency as a luxury. They were built as underground shields designed to absorb and retain energy. The thick concrete walls, often several feet deep, acted as massive thermal batteries. Concrete has high thermal mass, meaning it absorbs heat slowly and releases it slowly. That's the opposite of modern drywall and hollow stud walls, which barely store any heat at all. A dubby so. Bunker in 30-degree weather might begin cold, but once soldiers lit a stove, cooked food, or even breathed inside it for long enough, the heat soaked into the walls. Once those walls were saturated, the structure became incredibly stable. If you've ever been inside an old stone cellar during winter, you've felt a mild version of this. Consistent temperature, slow fluctuations, and no sudden heat collapse. Modern homes, by contrast, lose heat almost instantly because their walls don't hold heat. They merely block it with insulation, and insulation only delays loss. It doesn't store warmth. Shut off the furnace in a typical modern home, and the temperature inside rapidly equalizes with the outside air, because the thin construction materials can't buffer the change. To apply this in a practical way today, the closest civilian equivalent is using mass to your advantage. If you have a cabin or bug-out shelter, adding interior stone, brick, sand barrels, or even water tanks dramatically increases thermal mass. You heat the air, the mass absorbs it, and the shelter becomes far more resilient to sudden cold drops. WWWI bunkers stayed warm because they leveraged earth sheltering at a level we rarely use today. Most bunkers were partially or fully underground. Soil is one of the most stable temperature regulators on earth. About four feet down, the temperature barely changes throughout the year. In winter, that means the earth is often warmer than the air. By placing living quarters below grade or banking them with soil, the military took advantage of the Earth's natural insulation and thermal inertia. That's why even a lightly heated bunker often stayed at survivable temperatures. The coldest winter air couldn't hit the walls directly. Soil slowed down heat transfer so dramatically that even minimal internal heat sources were enough to keep temperatures stable. Here's how this applies now. Any survival shelter benefits from earth contact. 
Even stacking earth berms against the north and west sides of an existing structure can reduce heat loss dramatically. If you're building a shed, root cellar, or emergency bunker, sinking it even one or two feet into the ground changes its thermal behavior significantly. You're not trying to make it comfortable. You're making it stable, just like wartime engineers did. Butui bunkers stayed warm because ventilation was deliberate, not accidental. Modern homes leak air from every seam. Around doors, windows, attic gaps, vents, outlets, and thin siding. During Babiu Boitou, bunkers were intentionally sealed against drafts because drafts meant death. Ventilation was narrow, controlled, and often routed through long shafts that preheated incoming air by forcing it through earth or concrete. This reduced convective heat loss, the kind caused when warm air escapes and cold air rushes in to replace it. Modern homes experience massive convective loss because they exchange air constantly, even when airtight. Here's the practical takeaway. Draft proofing is one of the fastest ways to stabilize temperature in any structure. Weather stripping, sealing outlets on exterior walls, closing attic bypasses and skirting raised cabins can extend the survival temperature window of a building by hours or even days. It isn't glamorous, but neither were bunkers, yet it worked. Wati bunkers stayed warm because heat sources were constant even when small. A candle, a cook fire, or a small coal stove doesn't sound like much. But in a sealed, high-mass, earth-sheltered bunker, those tiny heat sources had an outsized effect. Constant low-level heat ultimately beats intermittent high-level heat in a high-mass environment. That's why wartime shelters could be warmed by something as crude as a small stove fed twice a day. For practical application today, you want a consistent micro-heat source mentality. A sheltered space warmed slowly and constantly by a small wood stove, a brick-enclosed candle heater, or a well-banked thermal mass rocket stove will outperform a space heated in bursts by a large heater. If you're preparing a survival shelter, choose a heat source that can run at low intensity for long stretches. That's what bunkers were built around. Why bunkers stayed warm because survival dictated design, not comfort. This is the part modern people don't like to hear. Bunkers felt warmer because soldiers accepted cold floors, cold air layers near the ground, and tightly enclosed spaces. They worked with heat, not against it. If you ever have to apply this knowledge in a real survival situation, the steps are straightforward. Shrink the livable space, seal the drafts, insulate the floor, and use available mass to trap heat. The goal isn't to heat the entire structure. It's to control the micro-environment where you sit, work, and sleep. That's how Bebusita soldiers endured winter in concrete chambers. If you found this breakdown useful and want more deep, practical, historically grounded survival insights, subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this video with a fellow history buff. More forgotten wartime engineering is coming your way.